Hi right, everybody, welcome back to the Augusta Civic Center where we just wrapped up Class A North Girls Semifinals uh, in the Knights. I'm Travis Barrett, Travis Lazarjic alongside. Hello. We're getting, yeah, we're getting to that point of the week where we don't even remember our own names. Yeah. If it wasn't the same, we'd both forget. We would definitely forget. <laughs> uh, tonight, let's see, the late game, number one, Scout Hegan, still undefeated. They beat Mesolonsky 58-37. to uh, And just before that, Hamden Academy, the number two seed, with a 50-36 to win over Lawrence. I think we can start there. Um, I- I'm not surprised that the top two seeds are playing in the final. No, neither am I. Uh... Lawrence did beat Hamden once in the regular season, but they're such a tough matchup with Bailey Donovan inside. Even though she didn't have a big scoring night today, had 13, but she had 20 rebounds. And uh, it's just it's tough to match up with it. Like uh, Coach Chesley was saying from Lawrence, he tried to you know stand in defensively and just be a big body in the middle and his girls at practice are still saying coach you're still not as big as her yeah so yeah, she, it's, you can't practice against it no you can't and i think the flip side was even when because um nick winchester the hammond coach he will spell donovan more than you might expect in yeah. terms of how we see star players used in these tournaments um but even when she went to the bench with like two and a half minutes left in the first quarter lawrence couldn't really find a way into the game and i thought um in the first half Lawrence only made six field goals, and, uh, you know, they shot 33% from the floor. They turned the ball over. For a team that is really predicated on being able to make shots from the perimeter, they didn't make nearly enough tonight to even keep it interesting. They weren't going to do anything in the paint with whether Donovan was on the floor or not, so they really had to live and die by the three. And they had a couple runs where they did cut it to three points, the, the deficit, but just couldn't make enough of those shots. Yeah, and I think Hamden flipped the script a little bit. Um... You know, Winchester's talked all year, or at least the last couple weeks, about, you know, they're a team that just wants to hold you to under 40. They're going to score in the low 40s, and they're going to try to beat you that way. And everybody knows what Bailey does and how many rebounds she grabs. But their perimeter game was really solid tonight. They they came out and made a bunch of shots right off the bat. And I think that really, that hurt Lawrence a lot. Because now Lawrence had to figure out how we're going to guard the whole floor. And double team Donovan down low. Yeah, and he had uh, I think um, Amelia McLaughlin mm. scored 11 points in the first quarter. She's not traditionally one of the the Hamden big scorers, and that kind of gave him a boost. And it gave Lawrence one more thing to think about. Yeah, and I think it showed. I, I think they just never look. Lawrence just never looked comfortable. I think yeah. even you know if so if we kind of segue into the late game, um, you know Meselovsky got beat by you know 21 points. They looked like they were trying to play their game. They looked somewhat quote unquote comfortable. Whereas Lawrence didn't, and I think if we go into that night game, um, you know, Scout Hegan, they just they they have too many kids that um, if one if one has an off night or two have an off night, they still have two or three more that are going to pick up the slack. Yeah, and when Annie Cook and J.C. Christopher are both on like they were tonight, I don't know what they both you know combined to finish with, but they were both you know playing exceptionally well. And they took a twenty-one-three lead midway through the the second quarter, and it's tough to come back from something like that. Yeah, it is. Uh, they finished with thirty-five points combined. Uh, Cook had uh, eighteen points, eleven rebounds. It's almost old hat now from yeah. her. Um, and Christopher, you know, she's she's the sixth man. She's the first player off the bench, and she does whatever they need, whether it's inside or outside. Yeah. Uh, she does it all, and, and it shows tonight yeah it should be a good game and on friday night um Skowhegan won both games by double digits uh, i think their quickness might be too much for hamden but you know we've seen stranger things i think that what will happen is if, if i had to predict which you know hate to do here but um Skowhegan's gonna press them and and their pressure against mesolonsky just it it made mesolonsky look bad at times and i think that's gonna be where I'm not sure that I'm convinced that Hamden's ball handlers are good enough to to kind of weave their way through that and then ultimately find Donovan at the other end of the court. And I think that's going to be where that game's won and lost. And it was tonight. You know, Scout Hegan, for all their offense and for all their options, they don't get enough credit for how good that full-court defense is. Yeah, they make you play all 94 feet, and it's it's just, you know, like the old Arkansas, you know, 94 feet of hell it's gonna be yeah. it's gonna be tough to play scout egan yeah and so in some other games today uh class b girls uh let's see greater gloucester top seed knocked off miranda cook 61 to 27 um i think we had another b game today why don't i see it oak hill uh played uh what they play today they lost or was that yesterday that might have been the other oh day. my god look at that see it's they already all starting to play together, together. i'm all, like that's why it's not here it's all bells and whistles. Uh, we had class c south <laughs> quarterfinals in here today that's what that's what class it was c south yes uh, uh booth bay won 
Uh, they're still undefeated, the top seed. Uh, they had a little bit of a scare. Yeah, I kind of walked in in the middle of that game today and kind of look up, and early on, St. Dom's is playing with them, and you think, well, you know, that's nice, and you keep waiting for Booth Bay to make that run and, and pull away, and they never did it. Give St. Dom's all that cre- all the credit in the world. They, they, they slowed the game down. They made, you know, Booth Bay play mm. kind of a, a tempo that they, I don't think they were excited to play, and... Uh, <laughs> It took Booth Bay to make some free throws down the stretch to put this game away. Yeah. You know, as a number one seed, you're undefeated. Maybe you say that's the scare, and now we'll, we'll get our stuff together for, I think, Madison next. Yeah, number 13, yeah. Madison, by so, the way. A conference rival. Um, I don't think this is the kind of game, you know, winning a close game will derail Booth Bay. But no, we'll if any, you know, the parallel is obvious, here, at least here this week, and that, um, you know, Scott Hegan struggled mightily against number eight Camden Hills, right. their opener, and then look what they did in the, in the semifinal against a team they knew pretty well. So Yeah, you survive in advance. Survive in advance. Uh, other games, let's see, so we said Madison, uh, number 13 beat number 12, Trape, 50 yeah. to 35. Uh, that was close at halftime, it was a two-point game, and Madison pulled away. Uh, NYA beat Monmouth. Monmouth got out to a good start, I think, right, if I remember seeing correctly, and I'm not uh, sure. Sure. Kind of, kind of wilted. So fifty-two yeah. to thirty-five there. Yeah. So there'll be a new Class C South yeah, two champion, two-time defending champion, and a new uh, state champion in Class C. And then Winthrop down sixteen to six in the first quarter. I believe they came all the way back and they beat Old Orchard fifty to forty-one. So Winthrop, we had talked about them last night that. You know, they haven't been here before, and I think that showed early in yeah, that Yeah, I think game. they were down 12-1 at one point. Yeah, but eventually they kind of came back. and Yeah, they settled down and played their game, and, and they're going to keep playing. And we're going to keep playing. So that's kind of what happened here today. Um, tomorrow is a big day. Yeah, we have flip people playing in Bangor, which is where I'll be, for some uh, Class B Boys and Girls North semifinals. You'll be here in Augusta for the Class A uh, North boys and Class D, uh, class, class D in the south, afternoon, Class yes, D South yes. afternoon. Yeah, so we games everywhere. Yeah, some uh, intriguing matchups all across the board. Let's talk about Class B North boys. MCI, uh, do they have a shot? They are playing an undefeated and loaded Herman team. Mm. So um, I'll give them a puncher's chance mm. if they get hot shooting wise. But Herman's so tough, and it's gonna. It would be might be one of the upsets of the of the tournament if MCI were to win that game. All right, and then we have Class B North girls up there, defending state champion Winslow. They have MDI Mount Desert Island, a team that uh, Winslow knocked out in the quarters last year. So MDI is you know they're already talking about it. this is a revenge game for them. I like Winslow in that game. I just think yeah. um, Brenda Beckwith has kind of figured out like. In some ways, she's instilled some new stuff with the same group she had last year, but or the same group that Lindsay had last year. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like she's um, she's kind of gone back to what has worked for them here in the last couple of weeks, and I think Winslow looks much more comfortable. Yeah, they're a defensive first kind of team, and uh, they're an inter- a nice blend of like talent and grit. You know, they're talented kids, and, and they work hard, so that usually prevails. Yeah, and I think they have a shot against the number one seed MDI. Yeah, I think they do too. Um, and Waterville girls. Water, and Waterville's still undefeated. Still They've undefeated. got Herman. I feel like that's a much taller task. I don't know why I feel that way. Yeah, well, they Waterville struggled for three quarters against John Bapps, a team they beat twice in the regular season. Maybe that was because Bapps was familiar with them and had seen them and kind of figured out, all right, this is what we need to do to hang with Waterville. You know, then Waterville kind of rolled them in the fourth quarter to pull away for that win. Um, Her, you know, Herman's an unknown. You know, we'll see. It's a 3-2 game, so I don't think either outcome would be a surprise. Yeah, I think you're probably right. I do think one thing that Waterville always has in its favor is, that, and we just talked about it like with Scout Heaton a little bit, that full-court defensive effort that they want to play, they want to make teams uncomfortable. By and large, they're able to, they've been able to do that. Yeah, they'll year. get transition baskets and you know easy layups and stuff like that, and all of a sudden you're on your heels, you're, you know, you're down six or eight, and you wonder what, what just happened. Yeah. Uh, Class A North boys are here in Augusta tomorrow night. They're semifinals. Uh, number one, Coney against number four, Lawrence, and uh, number – what number does Cowhegan come at? Six? Number six. Six no, Brewer. Six Brewer and seven Scowhegan. Seven Scowhegan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts there? Uh, Brewer beat Scowhegan twice in the regular season, but I think, you know, Scowhegan, if they can ride the Marcus Christopher train another game, that kid just, you know, had 28 points in their upset win over Hamden and – just seems to be that kind of kid that wills his teammates to play better. He's just a, a leader, and I, I think I like Scott Hegan in that one. And Lawrence Coney, uh, Coney beat him twice in the regular season, the second time on a, a buzzer beater. Mm. Um, you wonder, can Coney put together three straight games where they're 
they're shooting well enough, and Lawrence is definitely going to play defense. So I think that could be another close game. I think um, I said it the other night, Coney, Coney getting that dramatic, you know, last second, last minute win right. um, that they did. They tied it. With, it's what's lost in the steal and the layup for the win by McCormick is that he missed two free throws and then hit a th- got the re- they got the rebound, kicked it out, and he hit a three pointer with 37 seconds to go to tie the game to put them in position to win. I think that was Coney's sc- uh, scare. I won't be surprised if Coney wins by 20 points in each of the final in each of their next two games and wins the. No, they, they could. You know, they're a team that could score. Tw- you know, hit 20 threes in a game. They've done that this season. So. Yeah, to TJ's dad, as a matter of fact. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think they did it against Waterville yeah. as well. Thanks, Pop. And then I think in the other game, um, Brewers an interesting group. But I, I thought one thing the other day in watching them against Mount Blue was they relied on making a lot of big shots. And I think, as we know, in these tournament games or in any of these games. Um, if you go cold, even for a six-minute stretch, you can dig yourself a hole. It's tough to get out of. But I think Brewers playing as well as anybody in that region. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I think that's a tall task for Scotty. Yeah, they they are playing hot. They had to win their last couple games to even get in, and and they they did that. Climbed to the number six seed and beat Mount Blue twice, and uh, now they'll have Scotty Egan, who they they have beaten. So. Well, they, they've got that to fall back on. I feel like it's time to go get some rest because we're going to. I agree. It. Yeah. Um, that's Travis, and I'm Travis, and uh, we will have you covered tomorrow, centralmaine.com slash sports. Uh, find us on Facebook and Twitter, and uh, we'll, we'll be back with another podcast tomorrow night. It's, um, it's regional semifinal Wednesday. That means the tournament's getting yeah. to the end. We're at the halfway point. That's it? Yeah. Feels like so much more. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everybody, for listening, and we'll, uh, we'll catch up with you tomorrow.